Part two of chapter three of How to Analyze People on Site. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Paul Andrews. How to Analyze People on Site Through the Science of Human Analysis. The Five Human Types by L. C. Lincoln Benedict and Ralph Payne Benedict. Section 2 of Chapter 3. Seldom unemployed. For this reason, the muscular is seldom out of work. He's in demand at the best current wages because he can be depended upon to keep at it. While writing this book, our windows overlooked a public park in one of America's one million population cities. Hundreds of unemployed men sleep there day and night. Having occasion to pass through this park daily for several months, it's been interesting to note the types predominating. Hardly 1% belong to the muscular type. Likes to do things. Because he is such a hard worker, this type gets a good deal of praise and glory, just as the fat people who manage to get out of work receive a good deal of blame. Yet work is almost as pleasant to the muscular as leisure is to the alimentative. The muscular's pugnacity. Fighters, those who really enjoy a scrap occasionally, are invariably musculars. Their square jaws, the sure sign of a great muscularity, are famous the world over, and especially so in these days when war is once more in fashion. The next time you look at the front faces of Pershing, Haig, Hindenburg, or even that of your traffic policeman, note the extremely muscular face and jaw. Combat or personal fighting is a matter of muscle action. Being well equipped for it, this type actually enjoys it. That is why he is oftener in trouble than any other type. It was no accident that the phrase, big stick, was the slogan of an almost pure muscular. Loves the strenuous life. The strenuous life was another of Roosevelt's pet phrases and came from the natural learnings of his type. The true muscular is naturally strenuous. Because we are prone to advise others to do what we enjoy doing ourselves, it was inevitable that a strenuous a man as T.R. should advocate wholesale, universal and almost compulsory strenuosity. We tell others to do such things because it will do you good, but the real reason usually is that we like to do it ourselves. The acrobatic type. The next time you go to a vaudeville show, get in there in time for the acrobatics and notice how all the participants are musculars. If there are any other types taking part, please observe that they are secondary to the acrobats. They catch the handkerchief or otherwise act as foils for the real performers. All the hard work in the act will be done by the musculars. You'll find no better examples of the short, stocky, well-knit, pure muscular than here. You do not need to wait for another show to realise how true this is. Recall the form and height of all the acrobats you've ever seen. You will remember that there was not one who did not fit the description of a pure muscular, given at the beginning of this chapter. Acrobats always muscular. We once had occasion to refer to this fact in a human analysis class. One member declared that just that week he had seen a very tall, unmuscular man performing an acrobatic act at the Orpheum. Knowing that this was impossible, we offered a large reward to this member if he were proven right. We sent to the theatre and found the acrobat in question. He had just finished his act and kindly consented to come over. He turned out to be a pure muscular as we had stated. The class member's mistake came from the fact that the acrobat appeared taller than he really was. High platforms always give this illusion. Furthermore, his partner in the act was of diminutive height, and the acrobat looked tall and slender by contrast. Why they don't do it. To be an acrobat is the ambition of almost every boy. There have been few who did not dream, while doing those stunts in the Hamo on Mother's Broomsticks, of the glory that should be theirs when they grew up and performed in red tights for the multitudes. Almost every boy has this ambition because he passes through a stage of decided muscular development in his early years. But only those who are born with much larger muscles than the average ever carry out their dreams. The others soon develop girth or the sitting still habit to the point where a cushioned seat in the first row of the parquet looks much better. Durability in clothes. Something that will wear well is what this type asks for when he drops in to buy a suit. Musculars are not parsimonious nor stingy. Their buying the most durable in everything is not so much to save money as for the purpose of having something they do not need to be afraid to handle. Likes heavy materials. This type likes heavy, stable materials. 
Whereas the alimentive wants comfortable clothes and the thoracic distinctive ones, the muscular wants wearable, everyday clothes. He wants the materials to be of the best, but he cares less for colour than the thoracic. Quality, rather than style and plainness, rather than prettiness, are his standards in dress. Making over father's pants for Johnny is a job muscular women have excelled in, and for which they have become famous. For this type of mother not only sees to it that the father's pants are of the kind of stuff that won't wear out easily, but she has the square, creative hand that enjoys the construction. The plain dresser. Simple dresses, blue serge for instance, are the one the muscular woman likes. This type cares little about clothes as ornamentation. He is intent on getting his desires satisfied by doing things, not by looking at them. He also resents the time and trouble that fashionable dressing demands. No matter how much money this type has, he will not be inclined to extremes in dress. Musculars are not really interested in clothes for clothes sake. It is not that this type is unambitious, he is extremely so, but he is so concentrated on getting things done that he is likely to forget how he looks while he is doing them. When a person of this type does take great pains with his clothes, it is always for a purpose, and not because he enjoys pruning himself. There is little of the peacock in the muscular. A simple soul. Musculars are the most democratic of all types. The thoracic is a natural aristocrat and enjoys the feeling of a little innocent superiority. But musculars often refuse to take advantage of superior positions gained through wealth or station, and are inclined to treat everybody as an equal. It is almost impossible for this type, even though he may have become or may have been born a millionaire, to lord it over servants or subordinates. He is given to backing democratic movements of all kinds, and that explains why musculars constitute the large majority in every radical group. Humanness is hobby. Being human is an ideal to which this type adheres with an almost religious zeal. He likes the commonplace things and is never a follower after the thing, though he has no prejudices against it, as the fourth type has. An everyday individual. The muscular does not care for show, and except when essential to the success of his aim, seldom does anything for appearances. He is not an easy-going companion like the alimentive, nor a scintillating one like the thoracic, but an everyday sort of person. When in trouble. This type is not given to sliding out of difficulties like the alimentive, nor to being temporarily submerged by them like the thoracic. He stands up to them and backs them down. When in trouble, he acts instead of merely thinking. The most practical type. The practicalist is often used to describe this type. He is inclined to look at everything from the standpoint of its practicality and is neither stingy nor extravagant. He likes what works. Will it work is the question this type puts to everything. If it won't, though it be the most fascinating or the most diverting thing in the world, he will take little interest in it. This type depends mostly upon his own hands and his head to make his fortune for him, and is seldom lured into risking money on things he hasn't seen. The natural efficiency expert. The shortest, surest way is the one this type likes. He's not inclined to fussiness. He insists on things being done in the most efficient way, and he usually does them that way himself. He's not an easy man to work for, but quick to reward merit. The muscular does not necessarily demand money nor the things that money buys, but he tries to get the workable out of life. The property owner. This type likes to have a fair bank account and to give his children a worthwhile training. He's less inclined to bedeck them with frills, but he will plan years ahead for their education. These are not rigid parents like the fourth type, or lenient like the alimentives, nor temperamental with their children like the thoracics but practical and very efficient in their parenthood. They're fond of their children, but they don't spoil them, as often as some of the other types do. They bring up their children to work and teach them early in life how to do things. As a result, the children of this type become useful at an early age and usually know how to earn a living if necessary. Wants the necessities. The necessities of life are things this type demands and gets. Whereas the alimentative demands the comforts and the thoracic the unusual, the muscular demands essentials. He's willing to work for them, so he usually succeeds. He's not given to rating frills and fripperies as necessities, but demands the things everyday men or women need for everyday existence. Naturally, he goes after them with the same force he displayed in everything else. His heart and soul in things. When someone shows great intensity of action directed towards a definitive end, we often say, 
he puts his heart and soul into it. This phrase is a propos of almost everything the muscular does. He makes no half-hearted attempts. An enthusiast. Enthusiasm does all things, said Emerson, and therein explain why this type accomplishes so much. The reason back of the muscular's enthusiasm is interesting. All emotions powerfully affect muscles. A sad thought flits through your mind and instantly the muscles of your face droop and the corners of your mouth go down. Hundreds of similar illustrations with which you are already familiar serve to prove how close is the connection between emotions and muscles. The heart itself is nothing more nor less than a large, tough, leather-like muscle. Possessing the best equipment for expressing emotion, the muscular is constantly and automatically using it. Therefore, he becomes an enthusiast over many things during the course of his lifetime. This enthusiasm literally burns his way to the things he wants. The Plain Talker When deeply moved, this type talks well. If the mental element is also strong, he can become a good public speaker, for he will then have all the qualifications – a powerful voice, human sympathy, democracy and simplicity. In private conversation, he is inclined to use the verbal hammers too much and to be too drastic in his statements, accusations, etc. But he means what he tells you, no more, and usually not much less. He avoids long words and complicated phrases, even when well educated, and speaks them with directness and decisiveness. Straightforward. Straight from the shoulder might be used to describe the method of the pure muscular in what he does and says. He does not dear deal in fur bellows, dislikes the superfluous and the superficial. He goes through life over the shortest roads. Likes the common people. Plain folks like himself are the kind this type prefers for friends. He enjoys them immensely, but does not cultivate as a large number of them as does the thoracic, nor have as many bowing acquaintances as the alimentive. Snubs the snobs. The snob is disliked by everyone, but is the especial aversion of this type. Being so democratic himself and living his life among such commonplace lines, he has no patience with people who imagine they are better than others or carry the air of superiority. The only person, therefore, whom the muscular is inclined to snub is the snob. He is not overawed by him and enjoys taking him down a peg whenever he tries his high and mighty airs on him. Defends the underdog Standing by the underdog is a kind of religion with this type. He glories in fighting for the downtrodden. This explains why he is so often a radical. Much of this vehemence in radicalism is due to the fact that he feels he is getting even with the snobs of the world, the plutocrats, when he furthers the causes of the proletariat. Often the warpath. To have it out with you is the first inclination of what, when this type becomes angry. He is apt to say atrocious things and to exaggerate his grievances. Everything must yield to his dander once it is up. Being possessed of a highly developed fighting equipment, he is like a battleship with every gun in place most of the time. He is frequently in violent quarrels with his friends, and since he doesn't recover from his anger quickly like the thoracic, he often loses them for life. The most generous friend. When they like you, the musculars are the most abandoned in their generosity of all the types. They go the limit for you, as the westerner says, and they go it with their money, time, love and enthusiasm. All types do this for short periods occasionally, and for a very few choice friends, but the muscular often does it for the people he scarcely knows if they strike his fancy or appeal to him. His heart and his home belong to the stranger almost as completely as to his family, for he doesn't feel a stranger to anyone. He feels from the first moment and acts as though he'd known you always. This accounts for his democracy, for his success as an orator, and sometimes for his being broke. Not a quick forgiver, but disappoint him in anything he considers vital and he does not overlook it easily. He finds it especially difficult to forgive people who take advantage of the generosity he so lavishly extends. But he doesn't make his hate a lifelong one as the fourth type does. With all his own giving to others, he seldom takes much from others. The naturally independent. Standing on his own legs is a well-known trait of the muscular. Dependence is bred of necessity. This type, being able to get for himself most of the things he wants, rarely finds it necessary to call upon others for assistance. Love of self-government, plus fighting pluck, both of which are inherent in the muscular Irish race, are responsible for their long struggle of independence. Likes plain foods. Meat and potatoes are the favourite diet of the average American muscular. 
The Alimentive wants richness and sweetness in food. The Thoracic wants variety and daintiness. But the Muscular wants large quantities of plain food. The Alimentive specializes in desserts. The Thoracic in unusual dishes. But the Muscular wants solid fare. He's so fond of meat it's practically impossible for him to confine himself to a vegetable diet. When he is in moderate circumstances. The Muscular is often found in moderate circumstances. He's rarely far below or far above them. Many of the plain, simple, everyday things he desires can be secured by people of average means. He does not feel the necessity for becoming a millionaire to obtain comforts like the Alimentive, nor for extravagances like the Thoracic. When he is rich. Philanthropy marks the expenditures of this type whenever he is rich. He doesn't spend as much money for possessions, but enjoys investing in what he deems the real, that is, other human beings. The most plain and durable things in furnishings, architecture, and service characterize the rich of this type in their homes. The world's work done by musculars. Broadly speaking, the fat man manages the world. The florid man entertains the world. And the muscular man does the work of the world. He composes most of the day labourers, the middlemen, the manual and mechanical toilers the world around, as we have stated before. He could get out of hard places into better paid ones if he did not like activity so well, but lacking the love of ease and show he is willing to work hard for the necessities of life. Simple habits. The muscular's nature does not demand the exciting, the gregarious, or the food and drink things that lead towards laxity. He is seldom a dissipator. He likes to go to bed early, work hard, and make practical progress in his life. He leads the simple and yet the most strenuous existence of any type. Entertainment he enjoys. Plays about plain people, their everyday experiences, hopes and fears are the kind that interest this type most. The problem play of a decade ago was a prime favourite with him. He likes everything dealing with his everyday commonplace affairs for which he is most familiar. He frequently goes to serious lectures, something the pure alimentative always avoids, and he especially enjoys them if they deal with the problem of the here and now. He cares little for comic opera, vaudeville or reviews, because he feels they serve no practical purpose and, and get him nowhere. This type does not attend the theatre merely to be amused. He goes for light on his everyday experiences, and usually considers time wasted that is spent solely on entertainment. Music he likes. Band music, stirring tunes, and all music with go to it appeals to this type. Reading. True stories, news and the sports page are the favourite newspaper reading of the muscular. He does not take to sentimental stories as much as the alimentative, nor to adventure so much as the thoracic, but sticks to practical subjects almost exclusively. Being active most of his waking hours, and strenuously active at that, the muscular is often too tired at night to read anything. His favourite sports. The most violent sports are popular with this type. Football, baseball, handball, tennis, rowing and pugilism are his preferences. All experts in these lines are largely muscular. Physical assets. His wonderful muscular development, upon which depends so much of life's happiness, since accomplishment is measured so largely thereby, is the greatest physical asset of this type. With it, he can accomplish almost anything of which his mind can conceive. He's capable of endless effort, does not tire easily, and because his directness makes his work count to the utmost of his mental capacity. Physical liabilities. A tendency to overwork is the chief physical pitfall of this type. The disease to which he is most susceptible is rheumatism. But owing to his love of activity he exercises more than any other type and thus forestalls many diseases. Social assets. His generosity is the strongest social asset of the muscular. He is usually straightforward and sincere and thereby gains the confidence of those who meet him. Social liabilities. His loud voice and plain ways are the disadvantages under which this type labours in social intercourse. He needs polishing and is not inclined to take it. His pugnacity is also a severe drawback. Emotional assets. Understanding enthusiasm and warmth of heart are the emotional qualities which help make him the public leader he so often is. These have made him the born orator, the radical and the reformer of all ages. Emotional liabilities. His tendency to anger and combat the shackles that seriously handicap him. Many times these lose him the big opportunities which his splendid traits might obtain for him. Business assets. Efficiency and willingness to work hard and long are the greatest business assets of this type. Business liabilities. Pugnacity over trifles costs the average muscular many business chances. He has to fight out every issue and while he's doing it the other fellow closes the deal. 
he is inclined to argue at great length. This helps him as a lawyer or speaker, but it hurts him in business. Curbing his combativeness in business should be one of his chief aims. Domestic strength. Practical protection for the future is the greatest gift of the average muscular to his family. He is not as lenient with his children as the alimentive, nor as effusive as the thoracic, but he usually lays something by for their future. Domestic weakness. Cruel, angry words do the muscular much harm in his family life. They cause his nearest and dearest to hold against him the resentments that follow. Should aim at. Taking more frequent vacations, relaxing each day and curbing his pugnacity should be the special aims of this type. Should avoid. Superficial and quarrelsome people. All situations requiring pretense and everything that confines and restricts his physical activity should be avoided by this type. Strongest points. Democracy, industry and great physical strength are the strongest points of this type. Weakest points. Inclination to overwork and to fight constitute the muscular's two weakest links. How to deal with this type socially. Don't put on airs nor expect him to when you are meeting this type socially. Be straightforward and genuine with him if you would win him. How to deal with this type in business. Remember this type is inclined to be efficient and democratic and you'd better be the same if you wish to succeed in business with him. He's intensely resentful of a man who tries to put anything over on him and demands efficiency. So when you promise him a thing see to it that you deliver the goods and for the price stated. He does not mind paying a good price if he knows it in the beginning but beware of raising it afterwards. The muscular is serious in business not a jollier like the alimentive, nor a thriller like the thoracic, and he wants you to be the same. Remember, the chief distinguishing marks of the muscular, in the order of their importance, are large, firm muscles, a square jaw, and square hands. Any person who has these is largely of the muscular type, no matter what other types may be included in his makeup. End of section two of chapter 3